step here. Just don't step here on this uh, on this far end of stator here. Am I? Are you on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So it's time to finally get a floor underneath of here, and we have some serious uh, issues with our structure here. Uh, we're going to have to sister on new joists because this is um, completely severed, and we want to make sure we have good reinforcement underneath of our tub. So the first thing you want to do before you even get started with tr trying to get the lumber up here is to see how level your existing floor is. So I got a six foot level. I definitely recommend getting something fairly long like this so that you can really get evaluate the levelness of your bathroom. Now, you know, when it comes to rough and framing is really anything within a quarter inch is pretty good. Um, you know, you can be as precise as you want and the more precise you are, the better and easier it is gonna be for you to finish everything off in the space. But in my mind, um, sometimes, I mean, I, I like to try to get to perfection, but if I'm within a quarter inch, it's, it's good enough. You can, you can, you know, work things out later on. In this particular bathroom, I'm gonna be doing some floor heating. So I'm gonna be doing some floor leveler. So I'll have an opportunity to make everything 100% level if I don't get it to this point right now. But there's a couple things with these old bathrooms that you can't always get everything to 100% level with the framing. And I'll show you in a bit what, what I mean by that. But looking at this, this looks pretty dang good. I, it's amazing how these old homes, I mean, this has been here for over 120 years now, almost 120 years, 1910, um, 112 years, okay? So still all pretty level. So this is really, this is nice this way. So always check a couple of your studs. So we're gonna go this way, take a look, going from the, oh, across all the joists. And it looks like we're dipping down a little bit here in this corner. So we got about, looks about three eighths of an inch on this back end. So this must be, I'm guessing that, yeah, this, this existing old rim joist looks like it's sagged down on this corner. So when we put our ledger, I, I, I kind of already created a ledger here because basically since I furred out my wall, uh, we didn't have any surface for the flooring anymore. And I furred this out because I wanted to make sure that I have my vanity supplies on the outside wall so that it works really well with my freestanding uh, vanity. And then I always like the toilet supplies on the wall. I don't really like them coming through the floor. So I got this ledger. I kind of notched it out a little bit already. But the first thing I'm going to do is get this ledger completely level and making sure that I, I span across here. Because since I'm lower down here, I want to make sure I get that board up to the right height. Now looking at this edge. So coming back on this back portion, uh, sorry the live stream, you're not gonna be able to hear this, but, uh, or see this, I should say. Uh, coming outside of the floor area, we're kind of pitched down a little bit towards the doorway. And these are one of these areas that's very difficult to level out um, because you're gonna end up with a higher height in the bathroom. And if you have an existing joist on the outside of the floor, it's kind of hard to raise that because you don't want to have a hump. But the way I did this here is I basically tore out uh, the area underneath of the door frame. So I'm going to just bring that three quarter inch, even though it's slightly unlevel at the door entrance, I'll be able to make that up with the floor leveler and get that 100% level. To me, it's just going to be, we're only talking a quarter inch here in six foot. So it's not like it's a tremendous amount of slope. Uh, and it's just going to be better because then we don't have to deal with any type of higher transition at the framing section of, of where the outside of the floor is. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed. It's pretty nice to see that the, the levelness of this old bathroom has kind of held up over all these years. So the first thing I want to do is just get, so let me just cut a piece so that I have something to nail into. Level with this back area. That'll make it easier for my side ledger there. Looks pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so our ledger is nice and level now. So this is basically what we're gonna reference when we stick our new 
joists on here. So pay attention to where your water supplies are. You don't want to be nailing those. Okay, so for this joist, we're going to sister on this side. Main reason is, is because when I have my tub, basically we figured out we need about 18 inches for where my port of my um, trap assembly comes out of my tub. So I don't want to sister this side, plus I already put all my pecs on this side. So we're going to sister it on this side. And what's interesting is the way these old homes were structured is basically they have ballooned framing from all the way up from the top stud all the way down to the basement, just one long stud. And the only thing that they actually have is a little ledger board, a three quarter inch, like usually like a one by six or a one by eight. And that's what holds up this side of the house. Um, you know, traditional framing now, you basically build a wall, put floor joists down, up, and then you build the wall on top of the floor joists. But back in the day, it was all just one long 20, you know, 24 foot long two by four that goes all the way up to the top of the ceiling. So I'm just re referencing that because all we have for support is basically this old one by six that's nailed to this existing stud bay. Over here, we have a wall here and actually it's, it's a kind of a double wall, but this wall here is directly above our main beam down below. So that's a supporting wall. And there's other joists, I can't see any here, but there's other joists in the space where it's sistered over top of this. So this is a load bearing wall, and that's what you wanna find when you're installing you know, a new joist from one side to the other. So as long as I can get above this existing um, wall here, we're gonna have support on either side of this bathroom. So I'm gonna clear this out, some of this, uh, these blockers out because I wanna sister the new joist on. Now, most likely these old joists are a little bit thicker than the new nominal lumber. Actually, no, it's not, seven and a half. That's kind of surprising. So it is about the same size as nominal realm lumber, but we still might have to shim it. We're gonna to have to shim it up a little bit in order to get it to the levelness because we are raising this up a little bit on this side. So let me grab my joist here. Okay, so we just sistered out. I still got some nails down here. Okay, so that looks good. So technically now, I mean, I'm sistering onto this new stud, but this is the new support. So really this existing old joist here is just pretty much keeping me referenced with the parallel of the room. So, you know, if you were repairing some kind of a joist, this is adding a whole new joist on. If you were repairing something, you would want to get some kind of structural screws, maybe some carriage bolts that you bring everything together. But since I'm putting a whole new structural member here, this old joist really doesn't mean anything anymore. So it's just literally, I'm just gonna be nailing it together just for the sake of holding it into place. Um, now I do need some shims. Okay, so we're gonna get some shims because I need to raise that left or this right side up. So we're pretty much, yeah, it's almost, almost three eighths of an inch that we'll get that underneath of our Support rim joist here. Looks good. Okay. So now we can go ahead and just nail this on the place. Let me double check this side here. Yeah, it should be good. That's good. We got ductwork on this side of the bathroom or against the wall here, so I can't exactly put that over the ductwork. And one problem I see on this side is that my stud is right here. I can't cut that out because that's that's the actual frame um, 
framing of the bathroom. I think what I'm gonna do is basically just add a blocker on here. I mean, this is, this is for structural means um, because it's basically this U-notch here that I'm, I really don't like. Basically, they cut half of it out. So, and the rest of these, it's just within, within reason. You only got an inch and a half cut off of that. Right now, I mean, everything is on 16 inch center, um, but we're gonna have to bring this over a little bit just to support this. So that's what I'm gonna do because I can't cut out this joist or this uh, balloon framing stud and I can't get the, the framing on this side because we got a duct work on the other side. So um, it'll be close enough, it, it'll at least have good support in between here. So let me get a two by six on the side of this. And this is basically just spacing for the most part. Next piece of framing here. Let's make this work. Keep this all level over here. That looks pretty good. Just want to get some glue. Okay, so we're going to use some eight penny nails for this. So, and the ones that you really want to use are the ones with the ring shank. This will really hold down this plywood well. So, the ring shank, eight penny nails, uh, this just gives a lot more um, grab into the joist but we don't need these big framing nails anymore. And basically plywood is just like every eight inches. And some of you might be asking like, why am I using OSB? And I tell you what, it's really made a world of difference. I always, I was always skeptical of OSB um, before, but if it ever gets wet, not that you should be having any major issues here in the bathroom. Um, but it really does hold up pretty well. Uh, regular CDX plywood, that can delaminate very easily, especially when it gets wet. And I've recently just build, built a garage and um, a second story on my home, and it got saturated with water. We had some of these really big downpours, and I was, I was really concerned about the subfloor, thinking I just completely ruined it. If it would have been traditional CDX plywood, I would have had to replace it all because it would have probably all have delaminated and, and, and fell apart. But the OSB held up really, really strong. Just needed a light sanding and then I can go over top of it. So I don't know, I'm a big fan of OSB. I know a lot of people have questions about it, but I think it's engineered to be actually fairly strong and, and long lasting. So that's why I use it and it's cheaper. So can't beat that. But a real game changer is this constructive adhesive and a foam gun. This is so awesome, so nice, and so much easier to get the glue on these joists rather than using a big gun. Um, I love it. So definitely something if you do a lot of this. This, I mean, and if you do regular foam insulation all the time, you can just put that regular canister on here and, and go ahead and use it. But this construction adhesive is really, really pretty awesome. So you want to glue your subfloor. You definitely want to prevent any uh, creaks or cracks. So you go ahead and put this on the joist and this stuff is some sticky stuff so try not to get this on your on yourself All right, so this is a common area where there's some, some problems sometimes. And that is getting some blocking underneath where your door frame is. So I'm gonna get a couple blocks over here.
Okay, so I did lose audio completely on this here. But as you can see, I'm just continuing with my subflooring, making sure that I have everything nice and glued, and then uh, just placing everything into place. So really simple once you get all the structure all ready to go all the way around your room. Now, when you're putting two pieces of tongue and groove plywood together, uh, it can be sometimes a little bit difficult to put together. So if you put a block on one side and kind of pound it into place, uh, that's usually a kind of a strategy that works well. Uh, a lot of times you can just, you know, use your feet and kind of push it towards each other. But you do want to make that fairly tight so that everything's completely uh, solid between here. And I did mention I was going to eat my words on the that uh, spray foam adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear, see here shortly, you know, it just, I don't know what happened. I must have dropped the tool on it, but boy, it made in a really, really big mess. Uh, what a disaster. I'm just so happy that this was a flip home. Uh, it was my own home that I was redoing and all the carpet was getting replaced. Everything was being redone. If this would have been a client home, it would have been an absolute nightmare. So I thought it was a good idea. It is easier to use. Um, but I found out even later that it's just something that always gets gunked up and it's, it's problematic. So basically just nailing the rest of the plywood and uh, now we have a great foundation for a new bathroom.